Welcome back to Lean Unpacked. I'm Bruce Cousins, your Lean Sensei and Coach. Today we're going to learn how to see waste on your projects. In Unit 1 of Lean Unpacked, we learned about the basics of Lean and how to start assessing your job site in a lean way. As part of your first assignment, we asked you to list the value-added and non-value-added activities on the real-world project that you're currently working on or one that you had recently worked on. If you did not do this, take a minute now to think about your project and list the value-added and non-value-added activities on post-it notes. Remember, things that help you improve the flow and efficiency of your project add value, such as completing a BIM execution plan or erecting steel. Things that cause extra work, such as looking for tools, moving things around more than once, do not add value. We will use these lists to define waste and thus see waste on the projects that you are working on. In this unit, we will talk in detail about waste, both seeing waste on your projects and ways to eliminate it. There are eight ways defined in the Toyota production system. They are one, overproduction, two, waiting, three, inventory, four, movement, five, effort, six, rework of errors, seven, processing, and eight, underutilization of talent. Now take a look at the non-value add list that you created in assignment one. I'm gonna go through the eight wastes in greater detail. As I do this, think about how you might categorize the items on your list in one of these. Number one, overproduction is simply defined as goods not needed. When you overproduce, you bring too many materials to the job site or you put too much work in place without any consideration for how it affects the flow of work or the other trades on the work. Two, waiting is a common waste in construction. On a construction site, there's endless waiting, waiting for materials, directions, information, or prerequisite work. Waiting for equipment to arrive before you can finish your work or waiting for upstream activity to be completed before you can get started. Three, inventory. Inventory is another waste. Inventory is either information or materials that are required for the project to keep moving. Often, this is delivered late where the inventory materials are sitting around waiting to be processed or consumed. Four, movement. Movement is one of the most common ways that we see in construction. There's a lot of unnecessary movement on a construction site. Materials and equipment are moved many more times than are necessary or efficient. In general, materials move seven times before they are positioned where they really need to be. This costs an average of about $1 per minute. Five, effort. Effort is another form of waste. Often, due to the lack of planning in construction, there is a lot of extra effort ex exerted on a job site. Examples might include returning to the shop to pick up plans, hunting for information or tools that don't have a place, multiple trips to the gang box, or unnecessary transportation of goods. The sixth waste, rework, how often do you have to do rework because of errors or because one trade did not take care of another trade's already completed work? There are also, also often defects in project products that cause rework. The seventh waste, overprocessing, may seem like a way to eliminate waste. However, lack of overprocessing can actually create waste. Extra work is created because Things cannot be shared or there are often unnecessary reporting or materials must be expedited because they were not ordered in time. And finally, there is an excessive amount of coordination by multiple levels of suppliers. And the eighth waste, often overlooked on projects, is about people. It is the underutilized talent. Ways that you see this type of waste include the project manager or project engineer typing unused minutes, 
excluding trade contractors from providing input in the design, which results in rework or redesign, and not consulting the trade contractors to improve the production plan or schedule. Job site administrative assistance only doing typing and filing. Now, let's take these definitions of waste and consider waste on your project. Go back to the sticky notes that you created in the last session and categorize them. You can create categories with new sticky notes and post them in a line or on the wall or on a table. Then place the sticky notes with your job site wastes under the appropriate category. Stop the playback of this video for a moment to do this exercise. If you are with a group, take five minutes or so to discuss them and see if you all agree on the categories that each waste fits into. Also, list any more that you didn't see before. Now, do you think you can see waste all around you? Let's think back on Unit 1. We discussed that the construction industry is behind other manufacturing industries in productivity. What do you think you and your team can do to see waste, remove it, and make your project or company more productive? Your team can take their own small steps every day to remove waste and commit to improve your work for your company and your project. Remember that most of the principles and tools that we will present in this Lean Unpacked course require learning by doing. Here are some easy ideas to get you and your team started. Have your team read Paul Aker's book, Two Second Lean. Talk about how he transformed his company and what you learned from his examples. Engage others in your project on a conversation by simply asking them what bugs them about their day-to-day -day work tasks. Bring in pizza or other lunch to have a get-together once a month and ask the members of your project teams to add to your continuous improvement board. You can call this an oil change. While these suggestions get your you and your team thinking about wastes, they yield short-term benefits. Your team will need to put in a support system in place in order to sustain the improvement proposals. Seeing waste is not the end of the lean journey, it's just the beginning. To become a lean organization and as lean champions, you'll be expected to learn as much as you can about lean processes and tools. It requires that you and your colleagues change behavior and replace old habits with new habits. This is not easy for anyone. It takes time and requires a great deal of learning. Look at your resources for this course and you'll find a YouTube video about the backwards bicycle. Have a look at this and see how hard it is to learn something new and to put it into place. As you go through this course, I will present tools to you to think in new ways and manage your projects. Next, we want to introduce you to the plan, do, check, adjust cycle. Now that you've learned to see waste, let's think about developing an action plan to remove the wastes and sustain continuous improvement. It's important to start with the basics and work to eliminate a single waste. This will give your team early successes and encourage them to continue the process. Start by creating a plan to change the process to eliminate paperwork or rework related to the waste that you are targeting. By the way, some planning tools are software-based. However, unless the problems are very complex, these tools are often overkill. So let's just begin with the basics. Planning how you and your project team will eliminate waste takes a bit of effort and you may think it will slow your project down. But there's a saying in Lean, go slow to go fast. Many teams have experienced the benefits of planning and putting a plan into action. In football, for example, the famous coach Bill Walsh was reportedly the first NFL coach to create a game plan for the first entire first half of the game. He won three Super Bowls by planning and then adjusting the game plan 
as the game proceeded. So, the first step in creating a plan is to think through the problem and agree on what the root causes are for the waste. One way you can make sure that you are defining the right problem is by asking why five times. In Lean, this is known as the five whys. With this process, we are trying to determine the root cause of a problem. There's a tendency to jump to a predetermined cause based on incorrect assumptions. And often, in construction, we just think that that's the way it is and that we cannot make any changes to improve something. Or, we also might find fault with designers, suppliers, and others and dismiss a problem as something that we really have no control over. So we must think about a problem in the ways that we can actually make an impact and change the things that we're looking at solving. So it works like this. Five whys. The completion of stucco on the accent wall in room 201 is holding up finishes of all the classrooms. Number one, why couldn't the plaster trade set up the needed scaffolding to complete their work? Because the room is storing prefabricated plumbing materials. Two, why did the plumber use 201 to store the materials where work was needed to be completed? They are required by contract to bring all the materials to the job to get them on the payment schedule. Why did the plumber use room 201 to store materials where work needs to be completed? He wants to have enough materials stored on site to keep his crews moving. He was not assigned a distribution point for his prefab materials. Four, why did the GC project managers not establish a transfer area or controls to manage materials delivered to the site? The GC operated from a push system that did not anticipate the effects of the contract on material storage. Five, why was the contract used that had languages that required all materials on the site to be paid for? The requirement was included to avoid paying for materials that didn't show up on the project. Now that you've defined the root causes, you can take steps to do the plan, do, check, act cycle and develop an action plan. If it's a big task you're attacking, break it down into small batches first. Here's how it works. First, the plan should be small enough to be accomplished in a few days or week. Lasting learning requires that you create a plan first. Do. The plan needs to be implemented by those doing the work in the actual conditions of the job. Check. Check and confirm that the changes that you chose to work on were able to be accomplished in the time frame predicted. Compare these to the original conditions. Finally, adjust. If the efforts to remove waste were successful, put them in place. If they were not or only partially successful, adjust the plan and redo it. The process is a continuous circle until you get it right. The key takeaway from today's lesson is that you try these techniques. They all take practice. Other project teams have found success right away and have begun to understand lean thinking and how to take action on their projects. We want you to share these, but keep in mind that we don't want you to create more waste just by keeping a list and finishing, saying that you're done with the changes. And there's nothing better than achieving something difficult with your teammates. Here are a few ways to share successes and to get everybody on board. Shoot a quick video with your mobile device to share with your coworkers on this project and others, with trades and even your owners to show what you want to improve and what you have improved. Use the examples in the Two Second Lean book to document your improvements and also to tell people how they've been done. Post them on your continuous improvement board. Make sure that you quickly recognize your successes at the beginning of each day or each team meeting. We hope you will actively begin to see waste and work with your teams on removing it and working towards continuous improvement.